I was just like, fuck you, mom and dad, fuck you, sisters, and I'm gonna do what I want. Boys for the win. I love boys. People will be turning in their their like homework, and I'm just sitting there. I'm like, bro, I ain't turning shit in. Like, it's like hearing my dad and my mom said that say that they're proud of me just makes me really happy because I'm like, shit. I'm doing good in life. I don't even know what I would do if I wasn't a content creator because I can't picture anything else making me happy. Mainly, I wanted them to be mind blown, be like, oh my God, like this girl's a fucking hot ass girl and she's like giving me attention. I, I like, it's my entertainer side that comes out. That is just like, what? You know, like fucking all over the place, you know, ADHD here, there, there. But I'm actually an introvert. My other cousin had to memorize the entire periodic table just just because hi guys this is flowski welcome to another episode of flow and tell i hope you guys have been enjoying these podcasts lately i have been i've been really excited to share this journey that i'm on with you guys and kind of share my two best friends and so it's nice to be able to also read your guys's comments down below every time i'm talking about a topic with them or there's just any topic i just like to see all your guys's comments down below and see that what your perspective is on some of the things that we talk about. It's really nice that you guys go out of your way to go into my Spotify or watch my YouTube videos and just be a part of this journey and tell me like, dude, I'm a words of affirmation person. And so the fact that you guys are enjoying this makes me so happy. I feel like I'm on the right path and it just takes, you know, patience and i know that i will get there and you guys will all see me from the beginning which is really cool so i wanted to get into talking a little bit about well i know i normally don't do solo podcasts like i haven't done in a really long time so you'll probably see me doing this a little bit more often um because i am going to be moving and to me it's wild because i i literally did not expect that i would be moving um, I knew that I would be going somewhere, but I was thinking more closer to my family. So I had no idea that I would be going um, to California. I'm moving to California. Um, originally, I wanted to live closer to my sister because we've always kind of just like been together when like before I moved here to Texas. So right now I am currently in Texas and I'm going to be moving to California in about a couple months or so, um, pretty soon actually. And I'm a little nervous because I haven't moved in a long time. And the last time that I moved was because I lived in Nevada. So I was actually born and raised in Nevada. And I lived there with my parents up until I was about 24. Five, I think I can't remember it's been so long and so um but my goal for moving was just because I wanted to get away from a strict Asian household like I wasn't happy living back at home my family's like Catholic and my parents are obviously Asian so my mom is Taiwanese and my dad's Vietnamese I did not have a good relationship growing up with my family, um, mainly just because one, I didn't really do good in school. Basically, school is not for me and it was never for me. I just, I'm pretty sure some of you guys like school. Maybe some of you guys don't like school. I was one that did not like school. I never did well in it. Um, it all started when I was like really sick all the time. When I was younger, I was so sick. And then I got to a point where I, was, I didn't even have to go to school. Okay, I was out here getting tutored by like Vietnamese ladies or something like that. And um, then I was like kind of like homeschooled for a little bit. And then I did a lot of tutoring. So I never really went to high school that much and always just like pretended I was sick after I stopped being sick. And I just didn't understand. Like I just my parents would tell me like, oh, go to school, go to school because this is good for you and go be a doctor. And I'm like, I don't want to be a doctor because like I thought that if you weren't anything else in the world, then you would be a failure. If you were anything else but a doctor, you would be a failure. I grew up thinking that my entire life. It was always just like doctor this, doctor that, you know, my cousin would literally get um mcat books and anatomy books for christmas my other cousin had to memorize the entire periodic table just just because 
like during summer vacation when you're a kid you didn't have summer vacation okay you had to be out here reading memorizing the periodic table you had to memorize the anatomy of our entire body the origins the insertions at like eighth grade when you didn't i didn't even learn that stuff until college and so like it was, it, you know, I appreciate there's like pros and cons to living in an Asian household. Sorry, my hair is a little staticky. It just gets like that. There's pros and cons to living in an Asian household. And my, I never saw the pros growing up. Never saw it. Like, I just wanted out. I wanted to get out of living in such a strict place where I had to go to church every Sunday. I had to go to church school. I had to be in choir. I had to be an altar server. And then I had to, um, you know, pursue like volunteering at a hospital, a lot of like internships there. I had to take my, do my biology degree. I had to get into honor roll, which I didn't get into honor roll because I was not, let me tell you. Okay, when I came to school, every single time I was like, shit, like I'm going to be so behind. Like people will be turning in their their like homework and I'm just sitting there. I'm like, bruh, I ain't turning shit in. Like I'm so thankful I have an older sister because I was like two years behind her. So whatever my sister had to do, we went to the same school. So whatever she had to do the two years before, I would just take her projects, take her homework and put my name on it. I would like go through all of her like tests and homework and see if I could just like erase it and put my name on it. Or hopefully teachers would like reuse tests and usually teachers do reuse their tests. And so I was very lucky. Thank you, sister, for um, my sister saving everything because most of the time I would find old exams in from my sister i would find she would save books so i would just reuse her books i didn't have to pay like hundreds and hundreds of dollars for books um and projects there was like a physics project we had to do and it was like building a bridge and they would put it under like this pressurizer and if it broke then you would get like a grade off of it my sister's bridge was top notch people out here in physics class would be like studying and putting their architecture together and i was just sitting back and they're like bro you're not gonna work and i'm like I'm, I'm just gonna work on it at home but in the back of my head i was like yeah i'm just gonna take my sister's bridge and i'm just gonna put my name on it never got caught you know just like i think i think i was what I, what you call work smart not hard <laughs> that was called yeah work smart not hard yeah and then so i'm very thankful for that but it was just like yeah, I just didn't really do good in school and my parents were mad. I used to change my report card um, back when I was like in sixth grade. I would be changing my report card because we had to be in honor roll. OK, I've never once reached honor roll. Oh, my God. My dad was so mad at me because I, like when you're not honor roll, because the way in graduation, I think they do valedictorian honor roll and all of it's through alphabetical order. My last name's Tran. So the fact that I wasn't even in honor roll or valedictorian, I was in the back. OK, so my last name's Tran. They kept me at T. And my dad out here waiting three hours just for my name to be called. He was so pissed. He was like, what a waste of time. But look look, was it a waste of time? I graduated, you know, and, um, then came college and <laughs> man, college was rough, but I finally figured it out. It took about two years into college. And I finally understood like, why the heck am I studying? And I actually tried, I tried to go to PA school and, um, I, I did not do well there. And then I got like a letter saying like, oh, you could be a respiratory therapist. And I was like, oh, 60K a year, master's degree, two-year program. Okay, I think my parents will approve that. So that's what I did. I went to Texas for my master's program in respiratory. I was very happy. That was probably the happiest moment of my life because I was like, one, I don't got to like live under my parents roof and as you just get older and you just you just can't take it it's suffocating they love you it's their way of showing their love it's it's the asian way of understanding love and i didn't realize that until later and then i me and my sister's relationship was not that great back then but it took time um being able to move out really helped me grow a lot i wasn't scared was not scared to move out. I wanted to do this all by myself and I knew that I could do it. 
I think like a lot of the times when I have so much confidence and I know that I can do something, um, the manifesting part is like I really manifest and I'm like, do I feel like I'm going to do really well in Texas and I will finally finish my two year program in master's for respiratory and I'll start streaming. That was like my goal. And I did it like I accomplished. Uh, granted, it took me three years, but I accomplished what I needed to. And so even though I didn't like anything that I was doing, I still finished it. I got the degree. That was tough. That was very tough. Um, I made friends, definitely got some boyfriends over here. And I may have always been the type to have long-term relationships, mainly because back then it was always about just being lonely and unhappy. And I wanted someone on my side because I think growing up I just always felt like nobody was on my side nobody believed in me no one like trusted me I was always just a liar granted I kind of I did lie about a lot of stuff because I just when you're so sheltered and enclosed in this little space all you have to do is lie just to be free you know and um I now like moving to LA I was like, okay, um, I know that there's a lot of opportunity there and there are a lot of content creators. It's just like I'm a little scared because it's my first time moving just for me. Like, well, not really. It's like the second time because the last time I moved for me too. Like I moved just because I knew that my relationship would be better. Um, well, actually... I moved, I moved thinking that I was pretty much never going to talk to my family ever again. I just, my mindset back then was just very immature. I was so selfish. I was just like, fuck you, mom and dad. Fuck you, sisters. And I'm doing what I want. Boys for the win. I love boys. I was a little boy crazy back then, okay? Look, I was all about the virgin hunting, okay? I was like... Like, I get it. I get why they were so strict. But but I think that, that you don't got to be too strict. But I do understand the reasoning for it. I just think that, like, personally, if maybe they believed me a little bit more, I probably wouldn't have gone to relationships just to be, like, believed, you know? Because I would be, like, having... Okay, look, I wasn't out here having sex with them, okay? I was just... I loved making out. Making out back then was my thing. If you were a girl, you were a boy, I didn't care. I liked making out, okay? And, um, you know, don't don't call me for BJs. I ain't doing that either back then. Um, but I was just like, I had this thing about going after men that were um, nerdy looking, that were short. And it's just like, because I didn't, I had my glow up phase like kind of later. And, and I thought like, oh. I, you know, I didn't get a lot of attention back then. And so I always knew that I couldn't get attention from the guys that were like nerdy, nerdy and like gamers and stuff. So like, granted, look, this is not me now. This is like high school. OK. And so I would just like have a list of nerdy dudes and I would text them, play the fucking bachelor, the bachelorette with them. And um, I wanted to like my goal for them was like one would be like, well, for a couple of them, I would take their virginity and then and then two mainly i wanted them to be mind blown be like oh my god like this girl's a fucking hot ass girl and she's like giving me attention yeah that, that was uh that was my goal back then it was so freaking weird i don't even look you want to judge me for me back then totally fine okay i'm out here judging myself i'm like why the why are you like this and you know i think what changed for me to just stop being boy crazy was when I moved I like I don't I think like what took time was like just being alone um I would say like I was never the type to always like people I was a the serial dater like one guy after the other after the other you know like go on dating naps after this guy didn't break up like the best way to get over someone is to get under someone and so I was just out here just trying my best to like just ignore my problems my like inner self and finally when I decided to be single I like changed a lot you know they say like 
it takes a long time for people to change but i really do think it depends on where you prioritize change and if you really want it that bad because for me i don't want like a bad life you know i want good things good karma and so i try my best to evaluate every relationship that i've been in and um focus on myself i put relationships and myself like my personality at the forefront of my brain to be able to really work on what I know, like are hurting other people, what I know is hurting me as well. And so that's kind of why, like, like there's so much growth that has happened here in Texas, just being alone. And I'm looking back, like I am really, really proud of myself. I'm proud of like, and I don't say this often, Because I truly, I think like growing up is like you never felt like you were good enough. And so I never felt like I could be proud of myself. I always felt like you can't relax. You can't do anything that you want to do because you always need to work, 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 work. And I am still to this day always just trying to make my parents proud. And I don't, I think that's something I need to also understand is like my happiness does not revolve around making my parents happy. I have to really work on that because I can't help but like, I don't know why. It's just like hearing my dad and my mom said that say that they're proud of me just makes me really happy because I'm like, shit, I'm doing good in life. And I just don't want to disappoint them. You know, they are getting older. As parents, they spend their whole life just trying to give their kids a better future, especially my parents. And um, I don't want to take that for granted and like make them disappointed um but I do think that they've let me grow a lot more so they don't care that I don't go to church every Sunday um my dad still wants me to pray so I will get there at my own pace if I feel then like I will I don't know but um I definitely don't go to church every Sunday um I also stopped being boy crazy And I think I'm just more goal oriented and career focused. Like my goal in life, I don't even know what I would do if I wasn't a content creator because I can't picture anything else making me happy. I just have always wanted to be some entertainer making people laugh. And it makes me feel so good inside that I can make you guys laugh. And so like, yeah, if, if 20 year old me saw where I'm at right now in my 30s like just doing what I love like granted I'm not really much of a hardcore streamer as I was before but like they should be proud and I am proud I am very proud of like my work ethic my the way I manifest things and accomplish the goals that I set myself out to need to like get there don't know how to word it correctly but yeah I just I tell myself a lot that it was actually my first time actually telling myself I'm proud of myself because I think that like I don't see it unless someone tells me that they're proud and I'm like, okay, maybe. But um, I'm very thankful that you guys kind of boosted my confidence within myself and my growth because if it wasn't for you guys, I don't think I would be growing as much now it takes multiple experiences and people for me to grow because I have to experience these things I have to experience the trauma and you know the hurt in order for me to grow like I'm so uncomfortable at times like I'm actually an introvert so if you guys didn't know um I do seem like an extrovert but I I like it's my entertainer side that comes out That is just like, you know, like fucking all over the place, you know, ADHD here, there, there. But I'm actually like true Blowski is an introvert. I'm fucking chilling out. Okay. I like to watch reality TV shows. I love, uh, I love Boba. Okay. I love like big playing video games, Apex Pal World with my friends and 
I'm, I'm having a great time. Okay. I'm pelotoning lately. It's been great. And spending time with myself has been awesome. But it's something I was so uncomfortable with doing my whole life. I don't like being in my own thoughts as an overthinker. You think a lot. I think that the one thing though, that I am working on the uncomfortable part that I'm in right now is like, there's always uncomfortable things I'm going through every year, by the way, I'm sometimes uncomfortable just like trying to go out okay i don't i'm not comfortable going out uh parties kickbacks this is not my thing raves clubs i just don't like it i don't like i feel like it just expends all my fucking energy and i have to go home and like hibernate for like a whole week okay um i just like to chill you know and and work and do this stuff i could do this stuff for hours i could sit here podcast i could work do research on this for hours and days i just love it so much it just doesn't feel like work to me but having to go out and socialize i'm like planning everything out i'm like what am i gonna say who am i gonna talk to like what topics should i bring up uh, like should i eat beforehand like i'm like one week prior to the events that i have to go to i'm like planning everything out i'm like why did you say yes i'm i don't know why i'm this type of person where i say yes in the beginning and then as the day gets closer i'm like who the fuck was i like why did i say yes okay like don't say yes say no okay but maybe it's okay sometimes say yes but i was always just like why do you say yes to things when you don't actually want to go and then you're just giving yourself anxiety about it that's me okay that's fucking me but there's so much that has happened here in texas guys you don't even know like the amount of freaking boy traumas the friend traumas the school traumas getting bullied all the time like I love being by myself because nobody can touch me. Nobody can bully me. Okay? Like, you guys think that... Like, you're free to say whatever you guys want in the comments, okay? Say what you want. But what, like, hurts is when people say it to your face, okay? I just, like, I've been bullied. I think I've been trained for this life as a content creator based on my upbringing of being bullied your whole life, okay? Okay? I was like, my sister's fucking hot, by the way. Okay, she's hot as fuck. And so, you know, growing up in high school, okay, middle school, I didn't really go to school that much, so I didn't really got bullied. But growing up in high school, like, I was getting bullied all the time. They're like, yo, Flo, this, she's gonna you fail here. She's, like, trash. They're literally talking shit about me in front of my face. And then you get bullied in my, I used to get, like, migraines a lot, and so I never show up to school. I guess for some reason you get bullied for not showing up to school. I would get migraines that were so bad that, like, I would go blind, okay? And you couldn't see anything. You had to run into the dark. And, and that was me. And like, I couldn't go to school very often. I couldn't go to work. But like, nobody believed me. Like, they were just like, yo, you, like, are you sure? Like, it takes you out. Dude, it takes you out. Any of you guys that get migraines, the word saying migraine sometimes would even activate it. Eating chocolate would activate it. Anyone that flicks my head, I'm not really sure why in high school people were hitting my head. Like, is that a thing to like hit people's heads because I hated it? And it would, boom, migraine. I literally had, I hated it so much that I knew that it was going to happen. I was like, fuck, someone freaking slap my head. Tomorrow I'm going to get a migraine. But I feel like all this bullying that I went through has really helped me deal with the fucking roasting. Okay, granted, I can be toxic in Apex too. And so maybe that's my medicine, you know, the taste of my own medicine because some of you guys in Apex be having issues in the game, okay? So I need to be a little floxica for you guys, okay? Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I just, I just like, when I think back about Texas, I'm like, man, I just, I like it here. The memories, people here are really, really nice, by the way. I don't know what the culture is in California. I'm not sure what to expect. I'm not really sure, like, what kind of friends I'll make, what type of people are there. I've heard some things about California, okay? I heard that they're judgmental. They judge you based on your degree. The food's great. Lots of traffic. Very expensive. Um, but lots of opportunity. I and, and people there may be materialistic. Hey, let me know. If you guys are from California, let me know if you think I would enjoy it. But 
I'm going to go for it whether or not you guys say go or not. I'm a, I've already made up my mind that I'm going and I think that wherever I am in I've always kind of like learned so much. So like I've learned a lot leaving Nevada. I've learned a lot now in Texas and I'm going to learn a lot in California and I'm not afraid of where I'm living in. I just know that there's just more opportunity there and I want to see what it would be like in California if I'm able to do so and I am. And so um, I think that here moving out has really helped me with the relationship as well with my family. So like going back, 20 year old me would be like, did you ditch your family? Because like your family sucks. Okay. They're fucking rude. They didn't let you go to Evo 2018. They didn't let you do anything. You still gotta go to church. I'd be like, no, actually like my family is amazing. And I've understood now what it means like how they showed their love towards me, how they show they are proud towards me. It's just a different way of showing their love, but it doesn't mean that they don't love you and want what's best for you. It's just that you were a little crazy back then. So, you know, kind of valid, but like you made the right choice in moving. And with all your relationships, you've made not the best choices, but you've learned a lot through that process and looking back at everything here, I'm truly going to miss my friends um, that I've built because as an introvert, you don't really, as someone that stays home all the time and doesn't go out often say yes to things, I don't make a lot of friends easily. And that's why I have all of you guys because you fulfill that need to socialize because if I don't socialize you probably will go crazy you know and I'm probably vitamin d deficient so you know gonna get that sunlight maybe but yeah it's gonna be an interesting like I don't know what's to come and I think the scary is part for me sometimes the unknown I don't like the unknown I don't like not knowing what's gonna happen to me but I'm really hoping for the best. And I know that food's going to be bomb though, for sure. I know that I'm going to love the food there. And, um, you know, at first I wanted to actually live with my sister, but because we've just done so much together growing up has been so much fun with my sister. We, um, built like a YouTube channel together back then when YouTube was not really popular, it was like 2011 that we started. And within like a year or something, we would reach over a hundred thousand subscribers. Our videos, we hit like 5 million and, um, she went off into medical school. So we stopped doing that stuff. But like, even though we didn't have like, like I used to see her as a mother figure. So we always butt heads a lot growing up. Um, I think she just, also wanted what's best for me but like the motherly figure just didn't sit well with me and so I I would also lie to her and stuff and so like but we when I moved we still fought a lot because we had very different values but at some point when I just matured a lot more I thought back on a lot of like what my sister was trying to say to me and it it did make a lot more sense as I got older and what kind of switched for me completely to put my family first because I used to put my boyfriends first before my family back then all the time and I would choose them over my parents any day back then but what changed for me to finally put my parents first was when I was treated poorly by the guys that I was dating and putting all my love towards. I was treated poorly by the friends that I cared so much about and it wasn't reciprocated that they didn't actually care about me as much as I cared about them. And at the end of the day, when I was in pain and I treated like my family horribly back then, just not listening, running away, disrespecting them that they're still there and who really showed me unconditional love was my parents and my sister and so that's kind of what helped changed me to realize that I needed to put my family first 
and myself because I knew I wasn't going to hurt myself and I knew who I really am. So that's why sometimes too, is like, I look at the comments that you guys write that could be mean, right? But I know that you guys don't know me and I don't know you guys and I'm just trolling. And so I know that maybe you're taking me a little too seriously or something like that, but I truly know who I am and I'm not the type of person that you guys might write in the comments and that's okay. I can't, I'm not going to prove anything to you guys. I have nothing to prove, but with my family and me, it's just like, I hold them very tightly because now I know like I don't want to hurt them again. And we've, we've had, we have a great relationship. I'm not super open with them still. Um, it's hard for me to open up in general, uh, especially like, I think like, with my parents, they still want, you know, you to be rich or just like financially stable and in, like they still don't really understand what I'm doing, but they're supportive. It's just that uh, the topics we talk about are just like, I'm just there more as, okay, whatever makes them happy. My mom loves to talk. So I'm just here putting the phone on speaker and just letting her talk and, and dude, that makes her happy. Fine. Sure. Whatever. Um, Sometimes we open up. I love, I remember having talks with my dad, um, driving to Houston and we would just talk about like relationships and stuff like that. And he would give me advice and that was really cool. And, um, you know, just with my sister, we're so good now. Like we don't even fight. We used to fight every time we had a phone conversation, but we'll talk about anything. Now we are so close and I freaking love her cooking. She's amazing at cooking. And to this day, we still talk about this great memory we had growing up. It was just like, you know, listen, listen, I don't know what kind of memories you guys have with your sibling, but my favorite memory with my sister, it, look, it's my favorite because it's freaking hilarious. Okay. Is I used to eat her shit. Okay. I used to eat my sister's poop, but that's because my sister was a fucking poop eater. Okay. And so she, listen, it's not that bad. Okay. There's an actual thing where like, science it's like where people are actually putting fecal matter into a pill and then letting people swallow it to change the gut microbiome um to have better probiotics in there or something like that i don't fucking know i didn't look at it but i saw it in the title okay and i figured i was like oh shit that's crazy because i remember that when my me and my sister were really little my sister took a shit and she was like yo take a little piece and eat it and i was like look as a little sister you listen to your older sister all the time okay well i did i followed my sister everywhere she went i listened to her anything she told me to do i would do it for her and like she's like go get the water okay go do my laundry okay go cook for me wash dishes okay whatever you know and so like i followed her around she was pretty entertaining okay and i just like like she was like try this and i tried it but i threw up okay I think I did. That was what she told me. I, I spit it out and I threw it up. But technically, if I kept her poo-poo in my stomach, I would have developed her gut microbiome, perhaps, based on what I saw. <laughs> okay. All right. Look, I know you guys are disgusted, but listen, I'm pretty sure you guys have disgusting ass stories that you don't share to the public, that you're too scared to share, or you don't got up something, like, you don't got, like, friends to share something or you're scared to be judged i ain't fucking scared okay judge me all you want because i was little and i wasn't thinking at the time and i just wanted to listen to my sister and try her poop out okay fuck it i'm a shit eater and so that's all right but we are close okay she's a great cook she doesn't put anything else but she makes she makes pretty good food okay she's out here making pizzas and stuff all right and um my my dream was like to be able to bake and then she cooks and then we kind of just like live in the same neighborhood and we come over and we hang out with each other and we just sh like have fat ass gigantic delicious meal and i watch over her kids and she watch over my kids and it would be great and our kids would be friends it'd be awesome but i just know that like if i do move with my sister there wouldn't be a lot of opportunity there for me and so maybe i'll go in a few years i'll live closer with her um being in california it's not far from nevada so that's where my parents are so i'll probably visit them more often or they'll come visit me i think it'll be great i'm really scared because i'm not good at making friends i'm gonna try bumble bff again because i did try it here and it worked out really well and i've, I've made a whole bunch of friends so 
I think I'm going to do it again and I'll let you guys know how that experience goes. I'll probably like sneaky vlog it. You know, I'm not like a huge vlogger, but I'll sneaky vlog it and I'll show you guys what happens or how my Bumble dates, BFF dates are going. Um, we'll definitely talk about the experience that I'll get in California. Um, it'd be really cool. Like two years from now, I don't know what's going to happen with this podcast, but, or just my YouTube channel or something. But two years from now, when I'm not here anymore, obviously, I will see my growth. I will see my growth from Texas to California and I'll see how much I've changed. Yo, imagine, imagine I all of a sudden become a materialistic person. Imagine that I'm just like so different and I don't know. I, I wouldn't though. Cause I just, I always try to like change for the better. So I'm going to try my best to be good. Okay guys. I want to say though, before, um, I end this podcast is that I want to create something where future me would look back at this and be like, damn, you were different. So right now, future me, hello. And you guys are here to witness this as well. I am in this moment, you do have your internal struggles and you do have your traumas that you're still trying to heal from. But I hope that in California, you've made a lot of friends, good friends that are genuine. They care about you. They're not takers. And you've made memories there you haven't created any trauma no more crying i hope you're not crying as much i hope that you have grown in your career in some way whether it was podcasting or youtube or streaming you know i just i hope that you're happy i hope that your goals are taking off and you've achieved them um, I hope one of your social media accounts has hit at least a million followers because that'd be sick as fuck. I hope that you got a fat ass booty and you're looking fit. You got lots of hair. Maybe your hair is colored differently. Maybe you're married. Maybe you're thinking about having kids. I just hope that you're a lot happier than, you know, the downs. I hope there's not that many downs because there was a lot of downs here in Texas, let me tell you. But I hope in California you don't have that many downs, okay? You learned and you know better. So don't fuck shit up, all right? Don't be around people that are fucking shit up for you. And those of you guys that are watching me right now, I really hope that you guys are here for me to the end. Even when I'm like an old ass grandma. Yo, I would be a really cool old grandma, by the way, okay? And so I hope that you guys are also doing well. You know, I'm whatever I've noticed, the more I've opened up is that whatever I feel on the inside is probably how you guys are also feeling. And so we're not alone. Okay. We're not, we're very much there for each other. Okay. I'm here for you as much as you guys have been here for me. If there's any topics that you guys want to talk about, maybe how I became a streamer or how I deal with healing from trauma or how I, anything. Um, a lot of what I think I know that I can give advice on is my work ethic, <laughs> achieving what I want to achieve, like the little goals. Um, if you guys want to know how I like work through all that and ignore the noise, I could definitely talk to you guys about that. Cause I think I have a lot of experience in that area. Um, I'm, by the way, I just want to let you guys know, I'm not trying to give relationship advice. I just give my perspective and yo, if you want to think of me as a walking red flag, so be it. Cause I know who I am and, um, yeah, I'm not going to judge any of you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this solo podcast. I feel like a lot comfortable speaking to you guys this time compared to my very first podcast I feel so much more comfortable now so I think you guys can see that I hope you guys continue to be a part of my journey and I hope that those of you guys that are struggling just know you're not alone Plosky's here to make you guys laugh okay with a couple random things but also 
um, yeah, just let me know in the comments down below what you guys want me to talk on or what you guys are dealing with. And it makes me feel like I'm not alone either. And so it's nice to know that there's like faces behind the views. Um, so it's not just a number. I want to know that you guys are like people that can relate to me or hate me. It's okay. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on my next episode of Flow and Tell. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And also please rate my Spotify. It would help me a lot. Okay. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>